Some characters take a lot of effort to fully master them, but once you do, you can dominate the lobby, seemingly able to control every engagement. So in this video, we're going to go over the top 10 most difficult heroes to master and reasons why they are worth the struggle to become that good at them. The number 10 on the list is actually Winston, and a lot of people really underestimate how difficult it is to master Winston. Not only do you need proper timing, but you need to have an overall good sense of where everyone is on the battlefield and where you can apply pressure that creates space that also won't get you killed. In addition to that, a lot of people will say no aim, no brain must be a Winston main in reference to the fact that you don't need mechanical skill to be good at this character, which is just flat wrong. Winston's mechanics are really hard to master. Not only do you have to master jiggling in and around shields, learning how to do a lot of the set combos and knowing exactly when you can go in for more or you have to back up, which is like a judgment call and the mechanics to back it up. You also need to know how to primal, which might be the most difficult ultimate to master in the entire game because of the advanced movement and the ability to have crazy impact once you do. Winston has such a high carry potential once you fully master him, but I feel like very few players even scratch the surface. He's definitely one of the top 10 to master in the game. The next up, we actually got to talk about Lucio, but before we do, do me a solid and smash that like, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and let's get back into it. Now, yes, there's ways to play Lucio like a bot, right? He has a pretty low skill floor where you could pick him up and play him even without knowing much of anything and you could be all right at the character, but his ceiling is another matter. It's one of the highest in the game. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Mechanically, Lucio can be very, very difficult. Being able to glide around the map, do rollouts at a very high rate of consistency, and just overall hit your shots and duel with good movement, all of these things are difficult to master from a mechanical point of view. But then if you add on top of it the fact that Lucios need to have really high game sense, understanding how they can apply their boop to create advantages for your team in the battle, knowing when and where you can use your ultimate, how you should be healing and speeding and at what ratio, at what times. There's a lot of things that you have to do instinctually. They have to become unconscious competent, where you're not even thinking about doing them properly, but you still have to perform them well. And that really takes a lot of repetition on this character. And I do think that he has one of the highest ceilings. Definitely a really, really difficult character to master and shouldn't be slept on just because he's pretty easy to pick up. That's not the same as mastering him. The next up, we do got to talk about Echo, one of the hardest DPS to master in the game because there's a lot to do on this character. Not only do you have to have good tracking, good timing, and overall decent game sense, but oftentimes your ultimate requires you to know a ton of different characters and utilize them very effectively while you're using the ultimate. So you have to have good overall game sense, knowing a lot of different characters. The mechanics are difficult. The timing is difficult. And I do think that Echo is kind of that all-in-one package that is really hard to master all around. As a DPS player, you have to think a lot more and be mechanically better in a lot of ways than other DPS that get to kind of turn their brain off a lot more than Echo does. But that being said, once you master Echo, there's a lot you get for what you've learned. I think that Echo could be one of the hardest carry DPS, period, once you master her, but it does take a lot to master, and until you get to that point, you're probably going to be better off playing something else, but I do believe it's worth the journey, because once you're really good at this character, you can kind of just dominate an entire lobby. The next on the list we have D.Va, another character that I think doesn't get as much credit as she deserves because she's rather simple to pick up. She's a pretty common pick for a lot of the lower tiers of play, but the potential of D.Va at the top end is crazy. Not only do you need extremely good tracking on this character, but you need to like know everything that's happening and be able to react to it on the fly. D.Va has an APM problem where your actions per minute have to be very, very high. And it's almost like you have to know everything that's going to happen, everything that's happening, and really be very reactive and also predictive. And it's very hard to be amazing at D.Va. And it's one of those characters that has consistently dominated in pro play based on phenomenal diva players they have really been able to establish themselves as these 
just menaces that kind of drive the entire impact of a team. We've seen that historically where there's divas that just kind of go above and beyond and just completely dominate even the best divas in the world because this character has so many layers to get good at. But I do think that if you become amazing at diva, you can basically smurf any lobby that you're in and just have a huge win rate up to the rank that you belong in. And diva can really drive you to the upper tiers of play because of how powerful she is. I really, really think that also players that become amazing at diva just are amazing Overwatch players. Like if you are a GM1 D.Va or a Top 500 D.Va, you can probably play every character in the game at a Grandmaster level because of the overlapping skills that D.Va has with everything else. So yeah, definitely deserving of the seventh spot. Now moving on to number six, this one might be a little bit low for some people, but I think he's rightly placed and it's Genji. Genji is kind of the cornerstone for a very mechanical DPS that really forces you to play like to a different level of mechanics, right? Your movement is very high, your burst is very high, you have combos in your kit, and the potential is there if you can go in and just pull off some really, really insane consistent damage combos. I mean, we've seen what some streamers and pros have done with the limits of this character, and I really think that what you're rewarded with when you learn to master this character is that you can kind of just smurf all the lower rank lobbies like insane and what i mean by that is if you're amazing at genji you're not gonna be stuck in a rank where you're the best player in that rank you're gonna climb right to a higher rank because you're just insane and i think that if you're mechanically good at genji you can just get grandmaster just like that because that's where you can really just completely dominate people and kind of defy all rules by being able to 1v2 and 1v3 clutch up in situations that just shouldn't be possible for most characters, I do think that Genji is a very, very hard character to get to that point. Requires you to be mechanically good in a way that no other game on the planet teaches you how to be. And uh, yeah, I do think that Genji kind of doesn't deserve a higher spot, mainly because you don't have to think as much on this character. There's not as much planning. There's not as much game sense. Most of what you're doing is mechanical, although there are some fundamentals that you need to learn, which I've coached like a million times, but it's not as much as what I think some of these upper tier that also have that mechanics and also have that game sense. He still is one of the hardest characters to master, period, though. Now we're finally breaking into the top five list and we have Wrecking Ball. And some people are gonna be like, Wrecking Ball, really? And yes, to pick him up is pretty easy, but to master him is a different beast. There's so many different things you can learn on this character, not just with your timing of engages, but mechanical things, knowing exactly when to push your limits, knowing how to double boop and triple boop. And there's just so much that you can learn on this character and so much potential that you have when you master this character that a lot of people are nowhere near the skill ceiling. Even players that are in grandmaster they're not even towards that skill ceiling the potential on this character is incredibly high not to mention tracking is also part of it general mechanics that are very untraditional for a shooter game and overall because you're playing tank and because you're leading the charge your timing needs to be good your engagements need to be good you need to be tracking the enemy's cooldown baiting them out there's a lot you have to predict and do in addition to all this really complex mechanical stuff that i think really reaches a realm that is kind of insane and I think you just need to look no further than some of the top balls that play in ladder. Like, look at people like Chasm and look at people like Yeedle. And just, you can see what is potential in this character when you get to, like, such a high skill. And I don't even think that that's the upper limit on what this character could be if, like, perfectly mastered. Now, the next character that we have for you on the list is Kiriko. And Kiriko, it's kind of clear why this character is so difficult to master. There's so much you can do on this character, and almost all of it requires expert timing, game sense, or mechanics, right? Your kunais are hard to use, and they're mechanically very, very difficult. Not to mention, you can push your boundaries by pushing up, being aggressive, while still maintaining proper teleports back to your team proper suzu timing saving players throwing suzus like far away to save teammates reactively there's like so much that you could do on this character it's kind of like the apm thing on diva where your apm could be really really high and i do think that 
the tracking on Diva is a little bit easier than the type of aim that you have to use on Kiriko to reach the upper limit. And there's just so many decisions that you have to do on Kiriko at all times. There's so many little things that you can do better. Even if you're doing things right, there's like more things that you could do almost always with this character. And I do think that she's deserving of a top five placement. Very, very difficult to master. But of course, we all know what's your potential. If you master this character, you can just like deadlift game after game after game. Really, really do think that Kiriko is one of the hardest characters to master but also probably the most worth it to master outside of maybe one character on this list now the next character that we got for you in the top three spot is doomfist and i think a lot of people knew that doomfist was gonna be here because i mean come on the potential for this character is crazy the ceiling for this character is crazy there's just so much you can do reactively being able to fly in react to things do lineups do certain bounce techs there's just like a plethora of knowledge for this character there's tons of reactivity there's tons of advanced mechanics you have to think about how you're going to engage you have to think about how to bait out cooldowns there's so much to this character that really creates such a high level of skill expression and even as someone who's a GM1 Top 500 Doomfist main, I think that I am not even remotely close to mastering this character. Like, not even close. Like, I feel closer to not knowing how to play the character at all than I do to mastering the character. That's literally how I feel my knowledge is on this character, which is not how I feel about Genji at all. I feel like I'm a lot closer to mastering that character than I am on Doom, and I'm a lot better at Doom than I am at Genji, which is kind of crazy. That just shows how much depth there is of this character, just how high does the skill ceiling go, and I really don't necessarily think that any Doomfist playing today has actually reached that peak. Some people have gotten really high up there. Of course, some people that you probably know, streamers and pros that come to mind. But realistically, this is an incredibly hard character to master. Definitely a character that you can completely dominate any lower rank lobby, any lobby that is outside the top ranks of play if you do master him. But uh, yeah, definitely going to be a long grind to get there. And number two on this list, this one's a controversial one, but I do believe that Ana is the second most difficult character to master in the game. And these are the reasons why. Ana requires multiple types of fire projectile hit scan another projectile grenade that flies at a completely different arc so you have to learn and adopt to different types of aim a lot of different types of aim mechanically in addition to that a lot of these skill shots that you have to hit you have to do under constant pressure and you're going to be under more and more pressure as your opposition get better and better and that requires you to use them better and better in a way that like it's you hit it or you die and it happens so much that those under pressure shots those under pressure connections with your abilities you just don't have to do on nearly any other character and of course because you're a character that doesn't have mobility your positioning needs to be amazing and that's something that all the other characters in the top five even most characters on this entire list actually every character on this list doesn't have to position well but Ana does have to position well and hit really really difficult to hit abilities under pressure all the time that are all different from one another and you have to perfectly balance between damaging healing knowing when to nano knowing when to be aggressive knowing when to be passive there's so much you have to juggle on Ana to be that true master I do think that you could be reasonably good at Ana fairly simply if you just grind her a lot, but to become a master at Ana, to become the pinnacle of Ana, that's a completely different beast and incredibly, incredibly hard to do at a very difficult road. You almost have to obsess over every single decision you make because there's always a better one. There's always a way that you could have positioned better, played better, used your abilities better. There's always something you could do more. And then we move on to our number one slot, the character that is definitely the most difficult to master in the entire game, and that's Torb. Now hear me out, no, I'm just kidding. Other character that starts with the T, it's Tracer. Come on, you all knew that it was Tracer. Tracer is kind of the complete package. You are very fragile, so that means that you have to play around almost everything. You have to know what your threats are, and at the same time, you have to play mechanically well and have to do things in a very, very tight time frame. There's very little margin for error, and uh, mechanically, it's just something different. That level of mobility at the same time needing to track and then we combine it all together with the APM thing, the actions per minute that we talked about on several other characters with Tracer. There's just like always more you can do. There's always more that you can accomplish, whether that's one clipping, whether that's hitting pulse bombs, whether that's being a constant nat, whether that means dying never. There's so much that you can do on this character. Sky's kind of the limit. 
And I do think that Tracer is the most difficult character to master in the entire game, and it's actually not particularly close. I think Tracer is far and away the most difficult to master, but as we all know, definitely a character worthwhile to master. If you can become the best Tracer player in the world, then you're probably the best Overwatch player in the world. So yeah, anyways, if you agree or disagree with my list, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And is there any hero that you would have included? Who would you replace it with and why? Let me know your reasoning, but smash the like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and I'll see you next time.